In this episode of Some Lost Pages, we are going to hear a story which shook the entire Indian nation. And we know that this story will shake your soul too. This is a story of a lady who killed six members of her own family over 14 years. This is a story of a lady who managed to evade justice for almost over 14 years. This is a story of betrayal and deception, but at the same time, this is a story that proves that justice may come late, but will eventually punish the culprit one day or the other. So come and join us to dive deep into the depths of the story and search for those some lost pages. This story is from Calicut district from Kerala state, which is of the southern part of India. In this district, there is a small village called Kudata. This story begins in this small village. The central character of our story, Jolly, was married to one Roy Thomas, who was native to this village. Jolly is having two sons from Roy Thomas. It was once a happy family. In the family, there was Roy's father, Tom Thomas. Roy's mother, Un Amar Thomas. Roy has a brother, Roger, who used to stay in America. Apart from this, there is one sister whose name is Renchi. Everything was going fine. But our story begins in the year of 2002. One day, while drinking some soup, all of a sudden, Un Ama will faint and collapse. She will be rushed to the hospital, but soon after, she will be declared dead. Un Ama's age was around 57. Considering her age, people thought this to be a natural death. After this incident, Almost six years will pass by. The year will be 2008. One day, Roy's father, Tom Thomas, was having some food and suddenly he collapses. He will be rushed immediately to the hospital. But soon after the arrival to the hospital, he will be pronounced dead. Tom Thomas was almost of 64 years of that time. So people thought this too as a natural death. After this, few years will pass by. The family was recovering from the shocking deaths of Tom and Omama. In the year 2011, again, the family will get yet another shock. One day, after having some food, Roy started feeling uncomfortable and went to the toilet. But when he did not return from the toilet for long, Neighbors were called upon, who will then break the toilet door. Inside, they will find Roy lying unconscious on the toilet floor. Immediately, he will be rushed to the hospital, but it was already too late. Roy will be pronounced dead. Roy's uncle, whose name was Matthew, will demand to conduct a postmodern. Based on his demand, Postmodern was performed, and the presence of lethal poison, cyanide, would be discovered in Roy's body. During this time, Roy was going through a difficult phase in his life. He was facing some business problems. Considering this, everybody thought this to be a case of suicide. Time will keep on matching ahead. The year will be 2014. The same Uncle Matthew was one day alone in his house. His wife had gone out for some work. From Matthew's house, Roy's home was not far away. Alone at home, 
Matthew was enjoying a couple of drinks. While drinking, Matthew suddenly collapses and falls, unconscious. Jolly happens to be on the scene, screams for help. Hearing her cries, Nebo would gather and take Matthew immediately to the hospital. But Matthew will be declared dead soon upon arrival. Only four months will pass by after Matthew's death. The month will be May 2014. Roy is having one cousin brother, Shaju. The baptism function for Shaju's elder son was organized. During this function, Shaju's younger daughter, of one and a half year old, Alfine, collapses after having some food, panic erupted, and Alfine will be rushed to the hospital. There, this little angel fought for her life for three days, but could not win. Eventually, she died in the hospital. Because there was an arrangement of food at the baptism function, people would consider this to be a case of food poisoning and moved ahead. Just after two years from Alphine's death, the family would receive the next shock in the year of 2016. One day, Shaju was with his dentist. In the waiting area, Shaju's wife, Sally, will be waiting for him. At that time, Jolly was also accompanying them. After drinking some water, all of a sudden, Sally collapses and fell unconscious. Jolly and Shaju would rush her to the hospital, but it will be too late. She was declared dead soon after arrival. By this time, in this family, six deaths took place within a span of 14 years. In the year 2017, shock waves were run across the family when Jolly married Shaju who was the father of the deceased Alphine and husband of the deceased Sally. At the time of this marriage, Jolly was over 40 years old and she was already a mother of Roy's two sons. The family was already in the midst of a conflict and clashes because Roy's brother Roger had accused Jolly of forging documents to transfer some of the family's property under her name. In this matter, Roger had approached the Indian court for justice. As well as Roger always had his suspicion on Jolly for the mysterious deaths occurring in his family, due to this, Roger was constantly demanding Kerala police for conducting a forensic investigation in these deaths. But to that time, Kerala police were not considering any of these deaths from the angle of homicide. However, Roger's effort finally paid off in the year 2019. When in the year 2019, finally Kerala police decided to reopen these cases of forensic investigation. They took permission from the court and exhumed the remains of deceased family members from the graves and collected samples for forensic examinations. Everybody got shocked when all the samples were tested positive for the presence of lethal poison. Cyanide. Now, after all these years, the pieces of the puzzle started falling in place. The deaths, which were being considered to be either natural deaths or suicide, were turning out to be the cases of homicides. Now, the Kerala police turned into action. Jolly was arrested under the charges of these murders, and they began interrogating Jolly. Jolly was refusing any sort of involvement, but when police applied little pressure on her, she broke down and admitted to the crime. She confessed killing all six members by feeding them cyanide. Now this was very clear to the police that it was homicide committed by Jolly and cyanide was used in it. But the question puzzling the police was how she got hold of cyanide. This is mainly because cyanide happens to be a controlled chemical, which means you cannot buy it in the open market. Cyanide would only be available to certain industries and certain businesses like drillers. After some more interrogation, Jolly revealed that two of her known people used to provide her cyanide. One of them was M.S. Matthew, who was Jolly's friend, and another person was a local driller Prajikumar. 
Soon after, police will bring them into the custody and upon interrogation, they will admit of supplying cyanide to Jolly and that too against some money and liquor. But they keep on refusing any sort of involvement in murder plots. What is more shocking is that as far as the confession, Jolly used to get signed from them by telling her house is infested by rodents and she wanted to get rid of them using cyanide. As on date, Jolly is being prosecuted in an Indian court for the sixth homicide and both M.S. Matthew and Praji Kumar are being prosecuted as her accomplice. Apart from this, Jolly is also being prosecuted in another matter of a family property related forgery. In the case of murder, she may be given capital punishment or maybe she will be given the life imprisonment. Whatever may be the outcome, the only relief that is, no other innocent person will fall victim to Jolly's heinous murder plots. But at the same time, it will be disturbing to remember that. Rajo and Ranji will never get back their mother and father. The family of Uncle Matthew will never get another chance to see him. Those two sons of Roy and Jolly will not be fortunate anymore to see their father again. The little angel Alfine or mother Sully will not be returning back to this world. They will only remain in the memories of people or they will only remain in the stories like this. At the end, we will pray to Almighty to give these innocent souls peace wherever they are. We will meet again in another episode of Some Lost Pages and then we will get into the depths of those lost pages. Till then, take care of yourselves and thank you.